Welcome to Get Real with Eddie, where we delve deep into the world of real estate with your host, the designated managing broker of Exit Real Estate Specialist, Eddie Rudiger. And welcome to Get Real with Eddie. This morning, we have a special guest because Nancy is on hiatus. She is out with the board of directors for meetings and stuff. So today we have Megan Wetland from Fairway Mortgage here in the studios. Megan's NMLS number is 124984. Megan's been a host on the show before. Welcome back. How are you? I have frequent flyer. I know. I'm good. I'm good. Glad to be back. You almost hit the 100,000 mile mark. I'm just saying. So... You know, keep going and you get those those points. Right, you so, rack them up. Yeah, you do. I'll so, take it. Uh, how's things going? It's going well. Um, we're definitely seeing some positivity out there, I feel like. I feel it's, like the market's picking up. It, it, yeah, for typically at this time in a seasonal market, we see it slow down, but it, it's definitely it's, staying steady and it, picking up. It, I think it's actually gaining steam. Yeah, I think so too. I and, think so too, which is nice to see going into the winter. I'll take it. And, and we saw those rates drop right before yep. the rate cut. Yep. Now they ticked a little bit back up from what I've seen. Correct. Yeah. After the, the, the Fed rate cut. Yes. I think that's because it was kind of baked in, kind of it was already baked it. They were talking about it. We knew it was going to happen. The more MBS market reacted. The rates dipped, right? And mm-hmm. then we got a jobs number that was better than expected, and there you go. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, and right so... Back up. Right back up. Right back up. And, and so, yeah, you're just... It's, it's just amazing me. I did not think they were going to cut 50. I'll be honest. Yeah. I mean, I'm glad they did, um, but the conservative... The fiscal conservative in me was thinking point, point you know, point two five as well. I was thinking point two five yeah. as well. Yeah. And then the inflation report that came out just recently, I mean, inflation still kind of ticked up a little bit more. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of would have justified more maybe of a point two five, but yeah. they're the Fed seems to be from all indicators they are going to be rocking and rolling Next with year. with this rate cuts and moving forward, and they're not so concerned about inflation per se right they think they've got inflation under control yep. they think it's going to you know hold around this three and a half but slowly come down yep. to where they want it at the two even though i mean they're 50 percent higher than they should be right now correct yes. uh, so it's going to be interesting so one of the things i want to start off with um i found an article about three weeks old um on from ramsey real estate um because i know we have ramsey here on the show on uh jol and i thought it was uh pretty interesting article because we've done these before and these are tips for first-time home buyers but i think it applies to any home buyer rachel cruz was the author on this and they kind of go through um 12 tips for buying a house and i think this is really really good the first one is pay off all debt and build an emergency fund louder for the people in the cheap seats (laughs) seriously you are going to need three to six months at bills if something happens. Ideally, yeah. Yeah, because you never know. There could be loss of a job, primary yep. wage earner. You know, now you're a homeowner. There's an unexpected expense of a new water heater or, I mean, it could be anything, right? A tree falls down and damages your property. I mean, of course, we have homeowner's insurance and things like that. But having that emergency fund is critical because then now you're not racking up credit card debt if something comes up, an emergency happens. Exactly. That should be step one, emergency fund. It is step one is getting that emergency fund. Yep. I mean, and you're going to need the down payment money. You're going to need um, reserves. You're going to need all of that also. Yep. Even if you have down payment assistance and seller-assisted closing costs, you still want some reserves in the bank, a couple months of mortgage payments. And, That's ideal. And we're going to come back to the down payment assistance yep. topic. Um, the second is 25% rule to figure out how much house you can afford. This, I mean, this is different for every every customer, right? Every consumer, that might be work for some people, might not work for another. I know for every financial advisor has different numbers. I've heard 28%, I've heard 25 I've heard 35 I think it depends on your financial situation. Yes. And it's really important to sit down with somebody like a loan officer or a financial advisor, and or both, honestly, um, to figure out what works for you and your family. Well, Ramsey tends to be very, very conservative. 25% when it, is very conservative. When it comes yes. to money. And yes. that was the one thing I agree with. Yep. Is, don't get me wrong. I would love to see all of my buyers in a 25% ratio. Yes. That they're only taking, tw- you take what you bring in in a month, and 25% of that is what's going to housing. housing. Right. So if you're making 
you know, 4000 a month, you're basically about 1250 of that is your housing payment. Right. And I think the biggest thing with this is it depends on your other debts. If you are debt free minus your mortgage, I think pushing that 25% is okay. That's just, this is just my opinion. Yes. Um, but you know, if you have a ton of other debt, student loans, credit cards, car payments, that's when you might want to adhere to that 25% rule a little bit more because you have a lot of other monthly obligations. Nobody knows what your expenses look like. Well, right? and that and also, you. what's your job situation? Right. How are, stable? Are, I mean, do you have a? Are you uh, uh, ten years on? going to, you know, 30 year retirement, a full pension, or are you in a position where it's management, management's questionable, or is it contract work? Yep, yeah, maybe you get bonuses or overtime, you know, are, or is your pay, are you okay if that overtime gets cut? Are you okay if those bonuses aren't as much this year? Well, you know? I mean, and look at like a prime example, Walgreens is announcing huge uh, store closures. Yes. Huge amount of store yes. closures this morning. It's been all over the, the news um, yesterday and even into today. And so if you're a store manager for Walgreens, yeah, you're going to qualify. Yeah, you've got a job. But is your store maybe one on the, on the chopping it, block? Is it stable? Right. Is your income stable? Yep. So th that goes in. Okay. Do you want to bite off a huge house payment or maybe go a little bit more lower just in case? Right. Okay, aim for 20% down. That's huge. You're going to save on your private mortgage insurance. I, I, I get it. Not everybody can do that. I think it's better to get into the house. I agree. Because you're going to have appreciation, right? You're going to have appreciation. Whereas there's a mathematical equation. I did a video on this not long ago, but where somebody a few, three years ago put 5% down on a house. Now they have almost 40% equity in their house five years later. Whereas if they had waited five years to purchase that home, it's going to cost $100,000 or $200,000 more. And therefore, now they're going to have to make a bigger, their 20% down payment just got a whole lot bigger. And so you, they lost out on all that equity waiting. Absolutely. And like the last five years has been like the winning the lottery when it comes yes. to home ownership. The yes. prices went up 40% in the last five years. Yep. And if you have good credit, mortgage insurance isn't as outrageous as you might think. Yep. Depending on the home price, obviously I can't give you an exact number without, you know, the equation in front of me, but you're talking, you know, in some cases less than $100 a month and you're gaining more than that in equity. So you just kind of have to figure out, and this is where it's good to have a good loan officer who can strategize with you and calculate that for you. Like, you're giving up $100,000 in equity to save $55 a month yes. in mortgage insurance. Think about that. Like, that's crazy, right? When you have the 20% equity, as long as you have a conventional loan, you are allowed to reach out to your mortgage servicer and start the process of dropping that mortgage insurance. So the important thing is getting, or of course you can do it through a refinance too, assuming the equity is in there. But the important thing is to have those conversations and see what you're really saving for, right? It, it, that's the key is what are you saving for and getting in to the property the sooner the better even with what we're looking at I still feel we're going to be 20% up in the next five years mm -hmm. everything that shows me all the indicators are there I think we're going to be 20% up on the market the next five years so you run those numbers and look at that scenario at a 20 okay if it takes me how long to save up 20% but the market's going to be up 20% now I got to save another 20% of the 20% right so right. You, you've got to take that into consideration yep. so I, I really run your numbers and this is when having those trusted advisors your realtor your lender all comes into play you have to have your team yep. so um, your closing costs, you need to save another 3 to 4% roughly for closing costs. That seems like a pretty fair number for our marketplace. Definitely average and fair. Especially yeah. considering in our marketplace, we have um, huge amounts of property taxes yes. getting prorated over. Yes, so, definitely. Um, that helps with the closing costs a little bit. You get a little cushion there. Pick the right mortgage. and. Mm -hmm. Not we're not talking mortgage lender, we're talking mortgage. Right. Because Megan is always the right pick when it comes to lenders. That's right. But um you've got adjustable rate, you've got FHA loans, you've got VA loans. VA loans I are such an underused I agree. tool. And so is USDA. Yeah. So that's I mean, we used to have the USDA mortgage areas have gone a little farther out. More rural for sure. More rural. Yeah. There used to be uh, a part of Ridge Road that qualified and that has gotten taken away in yeah. the last decade or yeah. so. 
Um, but they'll look at the options out there. Yeah. You know, especially if you're a veteran, definitely look at the VA loan. Yep, I just met with a veteran before I came here today. Zero down, seller paid closing costs. He's buying a home for zero out of his pocket. That's, I mean, you can't, you can't beat it. You can't beat it. You can't beat it. Um, now we get into picking the right lender. Pick a lender you're comfortable with. Pick a realtor you're comfortable with. Absolutely. You're going to spend a lot of time with your realtor and you're going to get real personal with your lender. So I always tell people, trust your gut. It's a powerful thing. Absolutely. You know, it, it never lies. Um, and the biggest thing too is availability. Um, with stuff like this, you can't just pick, oh, this is the first person I talked to, or this is, you know, what you, you need to do some research. Yes. You need to do some research. Eight out of 10 people read a review before purchasing a $40 product on Amazon. You're about to probably spend a quarter of a million dollars plus Right, yep. like you're Absolutely. not going to read some reviews, right? We got to check into this person. Do they answer their phone? Do they return my text message? I'm I work Monday through Friday nine to five. Not me. I'm as if I were a client. Let's say you work Monday through Friday nine to five. Well, that means I can't work Monday through Friday nine to five yep. because you're shopping for a house at night and on the weekend. Yep. And if you have a nine to five loan officer, that may not work for you. So that should be a question you should ask up front. What's your availability? Yep. When can I call you? When can I text you? Yes. You know you can't. You're trying to win, win an offer, and I've had listing agents back in the busy time, and this still happens. Listing agent calls and lender answers the phone. You win. You answered your phone, right, if there's multiple offers. So the lender makes a big difference. You made the comment about getting – you get really close with your real estate and you get really intimate with your lender. Yep. I just ran into another client of mine, and we just closed their house on a – now, this was on the sales side. Okay. Okay. And we're just waiting for new construction. It was on the buy. And he turned around, he looked at me and he's like, I feel like I haven't talked to you because, you know, the first half is done. There's, we're waiting on new construction. Hurry up and wait. Yep. Yeah. So he's like, we haven't talked in like two weeks where you're talking every day. Yeah. And um, I'm like, it, it's just that natural, like f run up to a cliff and fall off. Yeah. Because we're talking, 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 and then we don't talk anymore. Yep. Um, and it's just, it, it, it's that really crazy situation in real estate you know, that happens every single time. Yeah. So, yeah. but you got to talk to them because this gets you into the next process. And that is if you are buying, get the pre-approval letter. Uh, I mean, preach. Like it, you have to have this. And it's not just to protect your realtor's time, but it's also to protect your time. Your time, you want to make sure there's nothing worse than falling in love with a house you can't afford. And a conversation I always have with my clients is, where are you comfortable with your payment? Let's work backwards yes. from there because you might be pre-approved for $500,000, yes. but if you don't want the payment that comes with that, now let's say your realtor shows you a house because you qualify for $500,000, but you're like, oh my gosh, that payment's way too high. I'm not comfortable with that. Now you have to go look at houses for $350,000. Yes. That's a big difference, right? And now your realtor has an impossible task and you're fall you fall in love with a property that you, on pay you, know, you don't want to afford, right? Just because you can't afford it. So getting pre-approved, it saves you, it protects your time, it um, ensures you fall in love with a house you can afford, and it's just, it's so absolutely necessary, and it makes your offer stronger, so there's that. When it comes to my buyers, I want to save them as much money as possible. Absolutely. When it comes to my sellers, I want to make them as much money as possible. Mm -hmm. That's my job. My job's to work for my client's best interest. Yep. But at the same token, we have to have realistic expectations. If you want granite in a three-car garage, I'm probably not going to find that in a $300,000 house. Yep. And we need to sit down and have those conversations. So getting pre-approved, all right, helps us target and zero in, okay, what is the issues and what are the features? You know, and that's where having a trusted real estate agent comes into play. Yep. Someone that's going to work through your best interests. And, and listen to you. Yes. I can't tell you, I've worked with obviously hundreds of agents and I have some that are like, well, what's their max budget? And I'm like, based at my response is always based on where they're comfortable with their payment. Here's their max budget and yep. here's their max monthly payment. Yeah. And we need to work backwards from there. Yeah. I, 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 I want the pre-approval letter. Yes. To be maxed out. Yeah. Because I want them to go in and look like they can buy a five hundred, six hundred, seven hundred thousand dollar home. Because yeah. I want the buyer to look as strong as possible. Right. But I want them to spend as little as possible when it comes to buying the house. Yep. I mean, and that's that's the aspect. Because here's the thing: 
it's not about for me everybody's like oh well why wouldn't you get them to spend all that money because you're gonna make more money no i don't i want them to spend a little as money as possible i want them to trust me i want them to feel comfortable with me because I want them to tell everybody they know, oh my God, you need to use Eddie. That's right. Or turn around and say in three to five years when they want to move up or upgrade or downsize or whatever it is they want to do, they come back to you to sell that house, And I right? just had that open over. Yeah. Not only did they come back to sell their house, all right, that they had contact uh, property they owned with the ex, they also had to, had to liquidate. Yeah. So they came back, we sold their primary property, and to lots. Right. So, right. I mean, that's the thing. It's, it's not about making uh, me making money on the one deal. It's me about make, getting the referrals. It's the bigger picture. Yep. A good, good realtor and lender understands that. And it's, it's people do business with who they know, like, and trust. And they're not going to trust you if you're just pushing them to the top of their budget all the time when they're clear about, you know, that's not what they want. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. And that's kind of where we're getting into with the pricing is clear those needs and wants. So number nine on the list is needs versus wants. Do you need to have granite or do you want granite? Right. Do you need three bedrooms or do you want four bedrooms? Yep. You know, square footage too, I feel like is a, a conversation people have a lot. I, I need 2,500 square feet. Do you need that or just do you want usable space? Yes. Right? A good layout. A 1,700 square foot home with a good layout is better than a 2,500 square foot home without a good layout. Yes. So those are conversations too. Yes, because there can be a lot of wasted space. Yeah. You absolutely. could have three bedrooms and a 25 square foot home and the three bedrooms are huge, but if you actually need a fourth bedroom because you need to separate individuals. Right. <laughs> that, that's like cough, the... Cough, cough, kids. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> So, I mean, that's really the functionality of the space. Yeah. You know, are there lofts, family rooms, living rooms, dining rooms? I mean, what's the functionality? Yeah. Do you need a rec room? You know, where, where's, well, how is the space being used? Are granite countertops something I can add later? I know nobody wants a house project, right? At least most people don't. But no. is that something if you find the perfect house and it's just missing granite countertops? I mean, that is something. You can't change the house location, but you can change the countertop. You can change that's the countertop. Doable, right? Yep. That's doable. Almost everything in my view is fixable or upgradable mm -hmm. except structural issues and water penetration. Yep. Because some of the structural issues, if you've got a house that's like sinking. Well, yeah, you can't really fix there's that. Nothing. Yeah. You, yeah. you can spend hundreds of thousands of dollars and it still could be sinking. And I've, I've shown houses that literally were. That's crazy. That the foundation, it was sinking. Oh, my goodness. And yeah. the, like... The hundred, I've shown the same house. I know right where it's at in McClintock Woods. I've showed it twice over 15 years. Yeah. And everyone, it's like every three to five years, this house comes back on the market. It's always low priced because there's water penetration issues. They have done tons of issues with the, like, putting in French drains and yeah. all of this stuff in the house. I can see the house, this ranch house, in my head right now. That's crazy, but people keep buying it. They keep well, <laughs> that people gotta have a place to live. Yep, yeah, that's just true. So and this gets into doing your research. Yeah. You know, research your properties. No I got clients and it's really easy to do. We'll get out to a house and they're able to pull up when it sold last, what happened with it, when it was purchased, price, all of this stuff. Research neighborhood stats, schools, all the, you know, all that stuff. You can do that pre-work in advance. Yep. And, yep. and that's that's kind of on you. Everybody thinks, oh, the realtor knows. No, they can't. You can't see her. No. Yeah. We're not allowed to say whether the crime rate is high fair or good. Fair housing. It is a fair housing yep. violation. Yep. We can't say if it's a good school or a bad school. You right. have to go and look at the research and look at the data. Yeah, you could say based on this data, here's you can form your opinion. Yeah, right. That's what you have to do. You can't say, oh, this is a this is a great school. This is the best school district. Well, whose de definition of best, best is district? exactly right. everybody's definition is different. So if you're, I have a lot of critical thinking clients. They, you know, stats. Yeah, I'm a stats person, right? Like, show me the stats. And so, but you got to do that research yourself. Fair housing violation. No agent should violate fair housing. Nope. Yep, we we cannot. Yeah, you can. We we can tell you go to online, go here, go there, but we cannot say, oh, this is a great school. No, based on what? What am I basing that it's a great school on? Right. And that is the whole concept of steering and fair housing. Yep. 
you know. So um, number eleven, I cannot agree with this more. Get a home inspection, mm -hmm. and I will add to that. Make sure you're doing a radon inspection in this market. It's a 50-50 roll, in my opinion, that yeah. it's going to come up hot for radon. Yeah. You know, and it's very easy to mitigate, very easy to address. You know, yes, there's some cost to it, but that is fine. It can be dealt with. It's dangerous. You've got to make sure that the property is safe. Leading cause in lung cancer and non-smokers. Yep. yep. Hands down. And they're starting to see other things coming out of radon as, as issues, too. So, um, And last, stick to your budget. So um, that's kind of the big thing. Make sure you stay within your budget uh, when it comes to buying a home. All right, we went really long on that segment, but that's fine. That's good. We're going to get into the down payment stuff, as I promised, after the break. Before we hit break, I want to talk about Plainfield and where Plainfield is at right now. So the median sales price of Plainfield is $393,000. That is up 6.2% from last September. These are September's numbers. Original list price on the median is $435,000, up 8.8%. Market time is down in Plainfield on the average to 35 days, up on the median to 14 days. So it's up 27.3% to 14 days. So that's an interesting little dichotomy there between the average is down 2.8% to 35 days, but the median is up. So just the way the numbers are falling uh, with that. So uh, percentage of last list price on the median, they're getting 100% of uh, the last list price. The original list price, they're getting on the median 100% of the original list price. Contracts to close, it is taking on the median 37 days to close. That is down 2.6%. Listing days to contract on the median is eight days. That is up 14.3% from the seven days last year. So mar we are starting to see the market, market time slow when you're looking at some of these numbers, but not dramatically. I mean, when you're in the basement going from seven to eight days, it's, I don't think, a huge issue. No. Month no, supply. No month supply is up to one and a half months. From, that is up 15.4%. It was at 1.3 months supply um, last year. Uh, home for sale is up 33.6% to 175 units. New listings is up to 199,999 that is up 2.3% under contracts are down 7.1% to 1,328 and closed sales are at 1,344 that is down 8.6% not uncommon for this time of year, though. No. This is a traditional market, I feel like. Yeah, I, I actually, I COVID think... COVID years were the off years. <laughs> I, I really think this is actually still stronger, because yeah. usually we see dr uh, bigger drops right. than what we're seeing. Usually so, come October, I feel like it just... Yeah. Yeah. Well, and if you look, like, homes for sale. All right, so homes for sale, actually, it was pretty consistent. 2.4% up last year, up 3.6%. Yeah, not crazy. No, you're not seeing a drop. The under contract, that's where I wanted to look at again. Mm -hmm. So last year it dropped uh, in September it was down 14.3%. This year it's down 7.1% from last year. So you're not seeing as big of a drop off as um, year over year. But the showings, that's the question. So showings are down 20.8% from last year on the average. On the median they're down 16.7 and showings per listing are down 19.8%. Yeah. Anything jumping out for you? That really like shock, shocked you, or everything no, looks pretty. No, it looks pretty consistent. Yeah, I think it's. I hear you hear the doom and gloom in the media, and when you really look and break down the numbers, it it makes sense, and there's nothing alarming to me here. Pr prices are up on the median price, six point two percent in Plainfield for this year, September over September. Yeah, that's a good return. Yeah. So, 
All right, we're going to take a break. When we get back from the break, wanted to get into some down payment assistance stuff. Megan's got some news on a new program that's breaking as we speak, so keep it here. It's with Eddie Rudiger with from Eddie. Exit Real Estate Specialists. And get real with Eddie. I want to bring you to your attention the Herbert Trackman Planetarium at Julia Junior College. My son loves this. They offer free shows on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. It's perfect for stargazers. The show provides excellent astronomical instruction and entertainment for no charge. That's right. It is free on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. The planetarium features a 30-foot diameter dome, a new Omnistar digital planetarium projector. During the shows, you can enjoy sky tours using the projector and PowerPoint presentations covering a wide range of astronomical topics. For more information, please visit jjc.edu slash planetarium. And for you educators out there, they are open for field trip bookings. So go to jjc.edu slash planetarium. Are you ready to make your next move in real estate? Look no further than Exit Real Estate Specialists, your innovative leader in the industry. At Exit, we're not just about transactions. We're about building relationships and fulfilling dreams. Step into a community of empathetic, well-trained professionals dedicated to your success. Our Exit Real Estate professionals are more than just agents. They're your trusted advisors and allies in the journey of buying, selling, or investing in real estate. Whether you're selling your home or searching for your next investment, trust Exit to provide an excellent experience from start to finish. Our commitment to putting people first means you receive personalized attention and support, ensuring your real estate goals are met with success. Call us today at 815-823-5478 or visit ExitRealEstateSpecialist.com to learn more. Exit Real Estate Specialists, exceeding your expectations every step of the way. The face for radio, the heart for real estate. It's Get Real with Eddie. Welcome back to Get Real with Eddie. All right, so down payment stuff. Will County's got some stuff coming out. Yeah. So what Started do we have? October 1st, actually. So October 1st, there is a down payment assistance program. Um, it's a zero interest system, and it's 25000 Tell me about it. Yeah. So basically you can get up to $25,000 in assistance as a first time buyer. Um, now, are you guaranteed that full 25,000? No, it's definitely needs based. Um, they do one-on-one -on -one counseling with you to determine your need. I've seen people get up to 25,000. I've seen people get 10 to 15. It just depends on that one-on-one -on -one counseling, your budget and what's needed for the home. Um, but you can get this in the form of a 0% interest second lien and after I believe it's five years I'll have to look at um, the exact guidelines five to ten years it's forgiven so it is a true grant um, it's forgiven over time and so that's pretty amazing you don't have to pay it back if you stay in the home for those five years I'm trying to scroll through the yeah. uh, setup here so and it yes the, it is income restricted like many down payment assistance programs right there are income limits on it mm -hmm. but in my opinion it's fairly generous I don't think it's, um, it's 80% area median income. So that means if you're a one person household, $62,800 per year could be your salary and you qualify for this program. And then it goes up from there, two person to seven person household. So it goes up from there. So yeah. the, the big aspect on this is the payment aspect is where it's paying itself off. Right. So you don't have to repay it because there's been a lot of down payment of system programs mm -hmm. where you go to sell the house and now you got to lump sum. Uh, uh, yeah, it comes due when you sell or refinance a lot of these. And now if you, for on the flip side too, this is the same program, a little bit's forgiven each month, right? So if you move in four years, there's still going to be a small balance. It's yes. not fully forgiven until five years. Yes. But the forgiven part is huge Yeah. because there are some deferred programs where, like Eddie just said, it has to be paid back. Yeah, so if you, you if you move, let's just say halfway through, and you get the full 25, mm -hmm. and you're halfway through that payment, you have to pay back 12.5, basically. Basically, yeah. yeah. So just yeah. keep it, 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 it's a prorational system, yep. you know, just keeping that in mind. I mean, that really makes a big, big difference um, when it comes to getting a property, though. I mean, the down payment assistance, it, it's, we learned this, during the Great Recession, mm -hmm. all right? Because it wasn't FHA properties that were failing at the beginning. It was conventional. Mm -hmm. 
skin in the game is not a deciding factor on if someone's going to keep their house or not. Right. Okay? It, it just, because a lot of people are like, well, you know, if we would have had 20 or 25%, there was more failures up front with conventional loans than there were with FHA loans. Yeah. The F- and think, yeah. The FHA loans started to fail actually later because we started to see um, so much failure in the system. Job losses came in yeah. and all this other craziness stuff. Statistically, happened. VA and VA has the highest. VA has the highest um, uh, success rate of any loan type, the least amount of foreclosures. Mm-hmm. Um, then it's conventional, then FHA. However, lately FHA has been performing better. So lenders want those loans. Like they're good performing loans. No, they are really good performing loans. And you can't miss out on opportunities to, to, to just take advantage of the market when there's $25,000 that you could qualify for. Right. So um, if they wanted to, where could they reach you? What's the best number they reach you at to get more information on the down payment assistance? 708-904-1414. Okay. Call me and I'm happy to sit down and see which program might meet your needs. Because it's sure. it's a case-on-case basis. Absolutely, yeah. This program might not qualify for somebody else. Yep. So, but there are, you do have other down payment Other stuff. down payment assistance options. There's several. I mean, there's at least 10 I can think of off the top of my head. The most common is definitely Illinois housing. And we're seeing a lot of this Will County, Cook County, geographically restricted. So it's going to heavily depend on where you're looking. Right, um, it, what what town you're looking in, what county you're looking in, um, your income level. I mean, there's so many things, factors that we could find out up front in a matter of five minutes. Determine, okay, this is a possibility. This one's not a possibility, and here's what that looks like. Because it's based on where you're looking to buy the house, Correct. not where you currently live. Correct. There's a couple programs. There is a community access program that is based on where you currently live. Okay. But that's another, again, another option, and that's something we can, you know, we would talk about geographically restricted again certain t- certain cities and towns all right we're going to flip the script let's talk sellers for a second here so why now is not the time to take your house off the market um m- maybe you're thinking of pulling it off waiting to see 2025 what's going to happen it's, right now is not the time to take off the market we're seeing traffic you heard us talking at the beginning of the show that we're seeing more traffic it seems than we've seen this time in other years yeah um Mike uh, Simonson, the founder of Atlas Research, explains, we're seeing a more normal seasonal pattern with inventory beginning to decline. We're also seeing more home sellers withdrawing their listings to try again next year. In fact, every two sales, there's another listing withdrawn from the market. Stop doing it. You have people in the market right now. Yeah that have to buy a house. I was going to say, people shopping in the winter are those people that have to move or really want to move or it's, in my opinion, more quality of buyers versus quantity and that's what you want. A spring market brings out the tire kickers. Yes, absolutely. Because they're like, oh, I'll try again this year. Oh, we can upgrade, but we don't have to. Or, you know, I want to move, but we don't have to. I feel like the people in the winter, it's more of a, we have to move. Like, there is a reason we're doing this. Mm -hmm. Or maybe they're first-time home buyers who don't have children and they don't, you know, they don't care about school district as much, right? And yep. that, that's the very real thing, too. So it just depends on um, on the buyer, of course. But I do feel like winter is a great time, well, best, best time. And you're going to see a lot going on with job changes, too. Yes. Because we're, we're, yeah. we, like we talked about End earlier. End of the year. <laughs> End of the year job changes, yep. things like that, transfers, things like uh, that come into play. People are in a position where they have to move. Freddie Mac says, during the fall months, serious Home buyers are eager to settle in to a new home before the holiday season ramps up yeah. and the what winter weather begins. And they that is want true. They spend Christmas in their new home. They do. Yeah. They want the holidays in their new home and they want to address getting into that new home. And we're sitting – another factor, and, and, and we've talked about this on the show before, Not again, not trying to get in political um, – the market normally is stalled out in a presidential election. Yes, no matter what election, it, it, I mean, it, it's just reality. Every four years, you uh, see some pullback. Exactly. And, and this year, 
I keep feeling like we're going to hit that. And I thought we were in it. I thought we were I in it. I thought we were too, but we came right out of it. Yeah. Yeah. The, it was slow for a little bit there. But right I back. think it was the back to school freeze. Yes. Yes. And now we're back into people looking at houses, looking at properties, trying to figure out, okay, what are we going to do? And it, it just really amazes me, especially with, I'm, I'm sorry, I think this is going to be a close election. If anybody, I don't know who's going to win. And I don't think anybody really knows who's going to win. No. And But for as close as it seems to be, I'm shocked on how much traffic we are actually seeing in the housing market. Yeah. Because normally markets don't like uncertainty. Right. And yet that's that's kind of a big aspect that we are seeing. So, no, I don't think taking your house off the market is the right choice right now. I think you have the opportunity to really crank out and really um, get into... A, a, a position where the lack of inventory is going to get you a higher price yeah. on your property. It really is. Because if you've got, for every two going under contract, one's coming off the market. Now that's those that have to buy, those sellers that have to buy. And going back, just look in Plainfield. Yeah. You had 9.7 people per sh- Listing. It's still a lot of people. It's a lot of people. Yeah. Again, close sales in September was 1,344. So every single one of those listings had basically 10 people looking at them. Yeah. All right. Now, granted, those people are probably repeating in a lot of cases. So it's not like there's 13,000 people out there looking for housing, but there's a lot. There's a lot. Yeah. It's still... You figure 10 people look at it, you have a 10% chance when you go through that, right? Like, is I, I don't know. It's just, it, it's, to me, it's still a pretty astounding number. Yeah, there's just a lot of people that are out there looking for property. So just taking, oh, well, I'm going to wait till next year. So w- what are you going to be in next year? What are you waiting for? I guess my question to that, and I, I challenge my clients to think about this, because I talk to people all the time, oh, I'm looking to buy next year, and I think it's great that they're calling the mortgage lender a year yeah. in advance. Like, that's fantastic, first of all. But my question back is always, why are you waiting? And what are you waiting for? Yeah. Because there's a deeper, oh, well, you know, if they tell me, oh, I'm saving three months emergency fund, perfect. That's an amazing reason to wait. But if they say, oh, well, I'm waiting for rates to drop, or, oh, I'm waiting for prices to come down. That's my opportunity as a mortgage advisor to educate them. And it's not me forcing my opinion on them. It's me saying, hey, look at this article. Look at these statistics. Look at these economic indicators. Mm -hmm. Let me educate you. And then you form your opinion after that. Mm -hmm. But based on everything I'm seeing, X, Y, Z, right? So, yeah, it's just you got to ask the questions and have conversations. Because most of the time after those conversations, people are like, oh, why Why am I waiting? Let's go now. Yeah. All right. Let's hit a hard break. When we get back from the break, I want to talk home values are rise, rising even as the median prices are falling. Keep it here. Get real with Eddie. It's Eddie Rudiger from Exit Real Estate Specialists. And get real with Eddie. I want to bring you to your attention the Herbert Trackman Planetarium at Julia Junior College. My son loves this. They offer free shows on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. It's perfect for stargazers. The show provides excellent astronomical instruction and entertainment for no charge. That's right. It is free on Tuesdays and Thursdays at 6 p.m. The planetarium features a 30-foot diameter dome, a new Omnistar digital planetarium projector. During the shows, you can enjoy sky tours using the projector and PowerPoint presentations covering a wide range of astronomical topics. For more information, please visit jjc.edu slash planetarium. And for you educators out there, they are open for field trip bookings. So go to jjc.edu slash planetarium. Are you ready to make your next move in real estate? Look no further than Exit Real Estate Specialists, your innovative leader in the industry. At Exit, we're not just about transactions. We're about building relationships and fulfilling dreams. Step into a community of empathetic, well-trained professionals dedicated to your success. Our Exit Real Estate professionals are more than just agents. They're your trusted advisors and allies in the journey of buying, selling, or investing in real estate. 
Whether you're selling your home or searching for your next investment, trust Exit to provide an excellent experience from start to finish. Our commitment to putting people first means you receive personalized attention and support, ensuring your real estate goals are met with success. Call us today at 815-823-5478 or visit ExitRealEstateSpecialist.com to learn more. Exit Real Estate Specialists, exceeding your expectations every step of the way. Stocks may succeed, stocks may fail. Real estate is always there. It's Get Real with Eddie. So you're the data person, Megan. Yes. Here's the data, and I saw this article, I'm like, oh, this is right up your alley when I saw it. The values are rising, but the median prices are falling in some areas. Now, granted, this is national. Mm -hmm. All right, this is not going on really in our market. But it's an interesting aspect when we're seeing this homes on the market right now are, are they're smaller so yeah. that's kind of a one part of this medium price dip yeah it's it's really interesting to me um and i am the size of homes being sold are smaller i agree with that i agree with it um i think it goes back to supply and demand it really does. I mean, you could carry everything back to that. It's just basic economics. So think of it this way, folks. Let's say you have a nickel and two dimes, okay? So then the median do, uh, do, um, currency you have would be at 10 cents. You have two dimes and you have a nickel, okay? 25 cents. It's not the average. It's the me median, mm -hmm. all right? Second scenario, you have two nickels and a dime. Well, now the median's a nickel because you have two nickels and a dime, Right. all right? You have 20 cents. So the average is 12.5 on the first scenario and 10 cents on the second scenario. Yeah. But the nickel is the median. And that's the aspect is we're seeing more nickel selling than dimes right now. Yep. And it, it's a really good scenario. Daniel Hale, chief economist at Realtor.com, explains the share of inventory of smaller and more affordable homes has grown which helps hold down the median price even as per square foot prices grow further. And I agree with that 100% too because that's what people need right now is affordable homes. We're sure, and so small, they're, they're having to purchase smaller homes yeah. to be more affordable. Like with the interest rates high and the, the prices going up and up and up, that's just what they're, you know, they're having to come to, back down to reality and it's okay to have a smaller starter home. And people are being more accepting of that. And we'll move up and upgrade in three to five years. We're not going to stay in this home for 30 years. Well, and you go back generationally. Yes. That's how the boomers that. did it. I was just going to say that. It's so funny you say that because that was think uh, on my mind. And I'm thinking back then, the boomers, right, would stay in their house for 30 years till it was paid off. And that's their retirement. Paid off. That was their goal to pay off their house. And then they stayed at the same job for 30 years. And then you get the pension. Yeah. Right? It was just that was the American dream. Yep. And it's a little bit different now. The next generation is different. We're buying starter homes and we're leaving jobs and leaving for better opportunities and, you know, every couple of years. And so it's just different generations are doing things differently. I do think you're seeing the generation, the younger generation is taking more risk. Yes. Um, like one of the things that they're a little bit more open minded to um, where I don't think previous generations would do. They're Who were fine. they raised by? Who was the previous generation raised by? It depends on which ones. The I generation mean, that probably went through the Great Depression. Yes, that's true. That I think about that with my grandpa. My mom's a boomer. Yes. My grandpa grew up in the Great Depression, had no food, right? So mm. him, the, I, the dream was 30 years at the job, the, at ComEd, I got my pension. Yeah. Right? And then his house was paid off his entire retirement, and he just lived a, a comfortable, simple life on Social Security. Mm -hmm. That's it. And his pension. Yeah. And that was his dream. Right, super frugal, lived like he was in the depression his whole life. But and my mom was raised by that, so same thing. My mom was at her job 35 years as a teacher, never tried to do anything else or go more, make more money. And mm -hmm. we lived in the same house our entire childhood. You know, so I, I look at that too. Who, who, what generational things are we passing down? Yeah, and it gets into the aspect that they're learning that behavior. I, I get it. Yeah. But I think it's also. They have seen where it can fail. Yes. And that's and what they, our generation is changing. They right? don't want to be that. Yes. 
they don't, it's not that they don't want to have the house and the retirement and the kids and all of that. What they don't want is the layoffs, the yeah. job cuts, the, the, the yeah. uh, uncertainty. And some of this is going into the Great Recession yep. because they were the kids of the Great Recession. 2008. Yep. They were the ones where they saw either their mother, their aunt, their uncle, their parents, somebody, grandparents losing a job around them. Yep. I mean, somebody around them lost their house. Yep. They were probably financially stra stra struggling and mm -hmm. strapped. Mm -hmm. It's There was no guarantees. And that's what they're trying to find. They're trying to, they're taking more risk, yep. at, especially at a younger age. And at the risk I see them taking is they're more willing to be a landlord yes. than previous generations. Yes. They understand the power of assets and growing assets. And leveraging debt, good debt versus bad debt. Yes. And debt is not all bad, right? It's yes. Not, as long as used properly, debt is not all bad. And that's a risk. To take on debt is a risk, 100%. Yes. And our, the, the boomer generation, no debt, right? No debt. That's no debt. Bad. That's yes. bad. But our generation, or the younger generation, X, Millennial, Z, they're understanding that I have debt, yes, but this debt's also bringing me cash flow, right? Our, we don't care as much about our debt and our net worth as we do about monthly cash flow and freedom of time. And we value, you know, Millennials value experiences. So you need that free time and that cash flow to do, have those experiences. Well, and you get back into the asset aspect of this, and this whole article is, the, the you know, the price per square foot mm -hmm. is going up. Mm -hmm. So in 2017, the median list price per square foot was $133. Yeah. In 2024, it's 228 Wow. That is almost a $100 increase. Per square foot. Per square foot. Yeah. So, I mean, that's a huge aspect and they understand that and they're leveraging that yeah. by taking on and looking to be landlords, looking to do, you know, other things. Um, it's just a really interesting aspect of where society has changed. Right. Right. So, because they're trying to set themselves up to be that like their grandparents were and... It's just a different way of doing it. Yep, exactly. A different way of thinking. And I think there's a lot of, um, you know, social media and information out there on the Internet. Kids are learning on YouTube mm -hmm. and all. Like, there's just so many different. That being said, on the flip side, you can also get a lot of bad information on the Internet. Um, <laughs> I, there's good stuff, too. My child good is too. all into space. Yeah. And he, he asked me about the, what if Mercury, or was it was Venus. What if Venus crashed into Earth? And he goes into, well, if the moon crashed into the earth, the moon would get ripped apart and really it would damage the earth, but it wouldn't destroy the earth because, and he used some scientific word. Yeah. Because of the gravitational pull of the earth, it protects the earth. Uh-huh. And I'm like, I don't what? even, I've never heard. <laughs> like he's what? He's now eight and he's now surpassed me. I've never yeah. heard that word before. Yeah. But that's the thing. He learns he's it all on, learning it online. Yeah. Online. Yep. He watches these videos about space on his tablet. Yep. All the time. And that's the same thing. I have new clients that come in and I look at them. I go, YouTube will be your friend. Yeah. If you need to know how to clean a gutter, change a faucet, it, go to YouTube. Yeah, you can find anything. Yes. Anything. But again, like I said, take that with a grain of salt. Know the source you're trusting. Yes. Right? Because you can get some really terrible advice on the internet too. So it's important to still work with your professionals in person and see who do you know, like, and trust? Like, who do you follow? Who do you go to for advice? That's really important. Yeah, it, you've got to have trusted advisors. Yeah. You can have your YouTube, and that's great, but you also need to have professionals Amen. In, in your sphere, yep. and you want want that as a go-to. Yeah. You know, and it's one of the reasons, like, for our clients, we have a VIP club, and we, we started. So our VIP club, we have plumbers in there, and we have uh, professionals that we have trained vet it and when we run into a situation we haven't had to remove anybody but if we do i won't hesitate going look what's going on i'm sorry i'm going to take you out of the pro right. the vendor vendors out of the program 
and we haven't ran into that, but that's just another perk yeah. that we have with our office with Exit Real Estate Specialists that they can go. All right, that wraps it up for Get Real with Eddie. Megan, one more time, if they want to reach out and reach you, what's the best number or way to find you? You can call or text 708-904-1414. All right, that wraps it up, folks. Don't forget, check us out online at Get Real with Eddie. Dot com. That's getrealwitheddy.com. Talking about your largest investment, 24 hours a day, seven days a week, your home. Thanks for listening. Eddie Rudiger is the designated managing broker and owner of Exit Real Estate Specialists. Located at 2750 Caton Farm Road, Joliet. License number 48101-4247. For questions, call Eddie at 815 823 5478